G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we have a new tank to show you. It's a Red Sea Max 500. It's an interesting tank because of the way it's been modified with filtration and lighting. So we're going to do a service video on this tank. We've already collected 2,000 litres of natural seawater so we can do a big water change. So let's go in and have a look at the tank and check out this Red Sea Max. So this is it, Red Sea Max 500. And the first thing I notice about this tank is just how bright the corals are. And one of the reasons why the corals look so bright is because they contrast beautifully with the black sand. So let's have a look at the corals and then we'll look at the filtration. There's a mix of LPS, SPS, and soft corals in this tank. And some of the brightest corals are on the substrate, such as the lobophilia and symphilias that we've got down here. There's a really nice scully we've got just here. There's some beautiful rhodactus. You can see these bright red rhodactus, and they're right next to some uh, very nice recordia. Now these recordia are interesting because you can see there's quite a few of them. Now they actually started out with one and they've multiplied. There's some uh, really nice hammers in the center there. It's, they're all together as a little hammer garden which is the way we normally uh, keep hammers. Over here we've got uh, some Acropora, there's some bird's nest, uh, Duncanops samia. There are a couple of uh, little bits of die off on a couple of the corals. Now this tank was recently relocated and it was a big job. As you can see, there's lots of corals. And so there's a couple of, uh, you can see the acro at the top and there's a bird's nest as well, I think, which is showing a little uh, bit of sign of die off. Um, but that's really just due to the fact that this tank was moved only a couple of months ago. So let's have a look underneath the tank because the filtration on this system is one of the most interesting things about it. So in the cabinet, we've got the normal Red Sea Max sump, as well as the Sea Skim 1800 skimmer. Now this is pretty much the only standard part of the filtration of this system, uh, because there's a lot of modifications and add-ons, and probably the most obvious of such is the refugium. Now, this section is typically used for the chiller, but with this tank, the chiller has been taken out of the cabinet and we'll have a look where that's located in a minute, to make space for this refugium. And it's quite an interesting refugium. Most of the refugiums we set up these days use ketomorpha for the macroalgae, whereas this tank has actually got, this refugium has actually got calerpra. And calerpra is very good in a refugium. The problem that I often find is that it'll often float up to the top and not make use of the entire space within the refugium. But in this case, it's actually, it's actually quite thick from bottom to top. And so you can see it's actually working as a great nutrient export system. Over in the sump, we have a UV steriliser, which is particularly important given that there are some tangs in the tank, and this helps to protect against protozoan uh, uh, parasites such as white spot and velvet. Now probably the most interesting thing about this tank is the fact that there's a nitrate reductor. This is something that we don't use in a lot of tanks but in this system it's working very well. So not only do we have the nutrient export system with the calerpra and the refugium but a nitrate reductor which is breaking nitrate down into nitrogen gas. And the way it works is we have a, a little pump down here which pumps a very small amount of water into the nitrate reductor and the anaerobic bacteria in the nitrate reductor will break that nitrate down into nitrogen gas. So as I mentioned, the chiller is not in the normal section in the cupboard, in the cabinet, it's actually in here. I find it really handy to have a second cabinet or cupboard next to your tank for things like your dosing pump, your chiller, things like this. Now we've got a Tico 1000 which is a particularly good model of chiller for this uh, purpose because 
the exhaust from the top of the uh, comes out the top of the chiller and is directed out the back, which is open in this little cupboard. We also have an MV controller for that nitrate reductor. Now this actually controls the amount of water going through the nitrate reductor and the idea is that we keep the redox potential at a negative so that we can promote that anaerobic bacteria. There's also a dosing pump on this system and we've got these little uh, vessels which are perfect in their slim line so they make it very easy to fit in the cupboard here. So let's have a look at the lighting before we do the service on this system. This is the second Red Sea Max 500 that we've looked at in the last couple of months. And the last one had a modification to the lighting system which allowed for the Hydra 26 lights. This is actually one better in that we have two Radeon Gen 4 Pros. And these lights are absolutely excellent and they're one of the main reasons why this tank is doing so well. It's a bit of a difficult tank to modify the lighting system and you can see that these RMS mounts are only just able to fit over this really broad section but they're stable they're doing the job beautifully the spread is perfect so it's a really good lighting system for this tank Today I'm going to do things in reverse. I'm going to start the water draining and whilst the tank is draining I'm going to test the water. Uh, I'll do the algae at the same time and then I'll fill the tank back up again. Now I'm doing this mainly because this is going to be a big water change. So I'm just going to get this uh, hose siphoning so we can get this tank draining. Okay, so we've got our tank fully drained and we've stopped the flow. What I need to do now is pump water back into the tank, but unfortunately our extension cord has died. So all of a sudden I'm in a bit of a rush. There's nothing worse than leaving corals out of the water any longer than you need to. So this is our natural seawater. I'm priming the lines. I'm gonna to have to use a generator, so it's about to get noisy, and I'm sorry to the client. I still have to put the candy cane back in the tank so we fill it properly, but I'll get this started. Alright, so the corals are only out of the water for a couple of minutes. They'll be completely under the water, submerged very soon. I've got the pump on full power. You can hear the generator outside. So luckily we had the generator because we were collecting water this morning. Uh, if it weren't for that, I'd be bucketing water in here and then when they would be in a lot of trouble. But I've also found out another issue that I have to deal with. For some reason, I've forgotten my normal scraper handle that I use to scrape the algae off with a razor. So I'm actually gonna to have to get all of this algae on the edges of the tank, just holding the razor in my hand. So that kind of slows things down as well. There's always something that goes wrong with uh, an aquarium service. So you just need to be prepared and make sure you've got contingency plans. But this will all work out okay. The tank will be beautiful very soon. 
Um, just lucky we had that generator. sucks so much not having our razor holder because the type of algae that is on this tank is really the type of algae which needs a, a nice clean blade and having to hold it in my hand just slows down the whole process but I've got to do it. The other reason why a razor is good on a tank like this is because the black sand as good as it looks it's really easy to get it caught in a scouring pad and then scratch the glass with it. So a razor is really the only way to do this tank. So I've just got to take my time and make sure I get every bit of algae and remember next time to bring my razor holder. It's time to clean out the skimmer and the sea skim, in my opinion, is a massively underrated skimmer. They're, uh, they're much better than most people give them credit for. And I see a lot of people swapping them out, but you know, they're, they're good. So the dilution of this waste is pretty close to perfect. The amount of froth and bubble that you get is excellent. Now this one, it actually has a broken handle and you can, fix, you can replace them, of course, but even with the broken handle that doesn't hold the head onto the body properly, it's still pulling a great skim. So uh, as always, I'll clean the neck um, and then I'll chuck it back in. So I'm just doing the final touches on the service and something that I almost always do at some point during a water, uh, service on a tank like this is I waft my hand over the rock and it allows you to see if there's any detritus building up in certain sections of the tank. Just by pushing a bit of water through the rock you can see occasionally you get these dead spots and debris will float up. So it's good for the tank and it's good for corals as well. But this looks pretty good. The tank is cloudy at the moment because we've just done this water change, we've cleaned the filter out and bacteria and particles have come up from the filter but this is all be clear in about an hour or two. Uh, very large water change and you can see already the corals are recovering beautifully uh, even though they're out of the water for that little bit longer than I would have liked given the fact that the extension cord didn't work and we have to use the generator. Um, I'm very happy with how everything looks. So that's the service. This is the tank, Red Sea Max 500, um, beautiful tank. And um, we'll bring you more videos of new tanks in the future. But for now, I'm Cam the Fish Guy and happy reefing. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy, and keep on reefing.